friends, Bishop Andy Silver here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my five-minute Bible studies. Uh, today, I am looking at a particular lesson that is entitled Shamgar. Now, for the last several weeks, I have been looking <clears throat> at a number of judges that are found in the Old Testament. I've discussed Othniel, I've discussed Ehud, I've looked at the more popular judges like uh, Gideon, Deborah, and even Samson. But today, I want to consider one of the more obscure uh, judges found in the Old Testament, and that would be the judge that we call Shamgar. Now, I have titled this particular lesson, I've entitled this particular lesson, uh, Shamgar, a short story with a powerful testimony. And the reason I have done so is because uh, while some of the other judges deal with uh, a great deal of written material about them, the story of Shamgar consists of one and only one verse. So let's take a look at Shamgar, a short story with a powerful testimony. Now, the story of Shamgar is found in the third chapter of the book of Judges. His story follows that of Ehud. Uh, his is the uh, shortest story of those that are found in the book of Judges. There are 12 judges recorded in this particular book, and uh, this book takes a look at 12 judges, but of those 12, Shamgar is the shortest of the 12. His entire story, as I've mentioned before, consists of only one verse. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anak, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox gold. And what's not on the screen is the last phrase of that verse, which says, and he too delivered Israel. Now, let me repeat that for you. Uh, this is chapter 3, verse 31 of the book of Judges. And after him in the hymn would have been Ehud. And after him, there was Shamgar, who slew 600 Philistines with an ox goad, and he too delivered Israel. Now, what I find of particular interest is that Shamgar shows up after 80 years of peace. Now, we close out the story of Ehud with the Bible saying that there was 80 years of peace under Ehud. And, and once again, the children of Israel do evil in the eyesight of God, and this forces them to have to call out to God. Now, here's what's important. The circumstances of Shamgar is that his people had enjoyed 80 years of peace. Now, the normal duration of peace during the time of the judges was 40 years. And so 80 years would have been twice that of the norm. And what I mean to intimate here is that even though we had a long duration of a peace and prosperity with God, it does not exempt us from misbehavior in our future. So we go from there, and uh, he is the son of Anak. Now, this is very, very interesting, because after 80 years of peace, you would have thought that the people would have been strongly connected and show a strong allegiance to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anak, the name Anak, actually is the name of a Palestinian, a Philistinian, I'm sorry, a Philistinian Canaanite goddess of war that was worshipped in Egypt. So I find it very, very interesting that the uh, that Shamgar is the son of Anat. And Anat is a name that is borrowed not only from another culture, but even denotes and even celebrates uh, a God that God, Jehovah, had already delivered the children of Israel from. Okay. Let's go into the particulars of the story. Uh, son of Anat, which slew 600 Philistines with an ox goat. Now, beloved, what is very, very important here 
is that Shamgar does this single handedly. Now, in the case of Gideon, in the case of Othniel, in the case of Ehud, they lead armies, they lead masses, they lead, lead hundreds of people into war. But in the case of Shamgar, he wages war on the behalf of God by himself. And so while others may have had a one-to-one -one ratio kill or a one-to-two ratio kill, Shamgar has a 600-to-1 ratio kill because he alone and single-handedly uh, takes out 600 Philistines with his own hand. Now, I'm just about through with this, but he slays 600 Philistines with an ox goat. The ox goat is a tool that Shamgar had when God called him into service. He was a herdsman, and the ox goat is what was used to prod and to push the herd of oxen along. Now, what am I trying to say here? That when God calls him into service, he does not whine, he does not complain about what he doesn't have. He uses what is in his hand. And I think that is so very, very important, friends, because we want all of the conveniences and all of the comforts and all of the assurances that will bring us success. But I would imagine that sometimes God is saying to you, use what is in your hand. What you need for victory, I have already given to you. And this is what I want to close with. And that's the closing phrase. And he too delivered Israel. Now, as I've already shared with you, uh, Shamgar is not as known. He is not as celebrated. He is not as popular as some of the other judges like Samson or Gideon. But in the end, he was the equivalent of those who got more attention and were more celebrated. Because in the end, the Bible says, and he too, meaning in addition to, in addition to Samson, in addition to Gideon, in addition to Deborah, he too delivered Israel. He was their equivalent because in the end, he provided the same service as did those who garnered more attention in the Bible. And that's what I want to close with, friends. You may not be the celebrated figure that you either want to be or that others around you may be, but God is only holding you accountable for what he has assigned to your hands and what he has called you to do. There may be others who, are, uh, who have a greater notoriety there may be others who are more celebrated. But in the end, what God is going to ask is not what did they do, but what did you do? And you want to be able to say, I too did all that I could do to win favor and to behave in a way that was pleasing unto the Lord. Well, friends, that takes up just about all of my time. And I certainly want to thank you for yours. Uh, I am Bishop Andy C. Luter, and this has been my five-minute Bible study. I do have an online school, so if this information and material has proven fruitful to you, I invite you to go to our website, take a look at what we have to offer there, and if you're led to do so, take advantage of one of our online courses. So, until next time, always remember, God loves you, we love you. And we look forward to seeing you real, real soon. God bless and thank you for being with us today.